Hello and welcome. This is a short demo of our fitted mesh support in Avastar. This video is made with Blender 2.70, and I use the Avastar 1.1 release candidate, from March 29, 2014, update 1039. Here we have a default Avastar character, and just in the case you missed it, the add menu has been moved, away from the top, and down into the footer of the 3D view. And here, I use the append function to load my working model from a separate blend file, which contains a simple dress in this case. This dress has already been skinned, and it contains a set of weight maps, which have been made for a subset of the well-known 26 classic second life bones. First I demonstrate how Avastar supports the conversion of this dress into a fitted mesh. At the moment I recommend that you always use the default Avastar character as the reference model for your fitted mesh attachments. However, you already can use both genders as the reference for your work. So, let's start and select the armature, and then shift select the dress. Let us also open the data properties panel of the mesh. This allows us to see later how the vertex groups will change. Now proceed by opening the tool shelf. Then open the Avastar tab. Navigate to the skinning and rigging section. And locate the skinning panel. So, I already mentioned that our mesh contains weight groups, and when we assign the mesh to the armature in a moment, then we want to keep these groups preserved. And in order to make this possible, we have added the Keep Weights option. When this option is enabled, then all existing weight maps will be kept as they are, which is exactly what we want in this case. Okay. So let's connect the dress to the armature, by pressing the Assign Armature button. Now the dress is ready for posing. But hold on, the weights still refer to the classic second life bones. And thus we still do not have a fitted mesh. However, we see that by now the skinning panel also has changed a bit. Most apparent, we now get a new configuration box. Here we find two presets for classic deform and for fitted mesh deform. And this, is the option of our choice. We also find a weight selector here, and this selector specifies from which source Avastar has to take the fitted mesh weights. We will choose the move option here. This option will propagate all existing weight groups to their corresponding fitted mesh counterparts. However since the beginning of 2014, Linden Lab provides several additional fitted mesh bones. These bones have no counterpart in the old bone system. And because of this, they are not automatically created. But Avastar provides a weight generator for these additional bones. And you can enable the generator simply by checking the generate option. And now we are ready to press the apply button to get our changes applied to the skeleton. And indeed, as soon as you applied the configuration, you can see that the weight groups now refer to the fitted mesh bones. So, finally, your mesh has been converted to a fully working fitted mesh. You can check this by going to pose mode and pose the model. And if all went well, you see that the dress will follow the pose. Well, we still have two remaining tasks to do, and that is. First, we need to improve the weight maps for the rig, such that your animations work smooth, and you won't get distortions while posing your character. And second, we have to improve the weight maps for fitting, that is, make them work smoothly with the shaped sliders. In this video we will only take care of the fitting, and here is how it works. Let's select our dress again. Well. You need to know that the Armature Assign tool has automatically attached your mesh to the shape sliders. Therefore you now see two additional buttons, one for detaching the sliders, and one for refreshing the shape. We will get back to this last button in a moment. Okay, 
Let's now take a look at how the shape sliders deform your mesh. Select the armature again. And then open the armature object properties. There, you find the avatar shape panel. But note, this panel is sometimes not initialized. If this is the case for you, then you will see a button labeled with, Load Shape Editor. And pressing this button will load the editor and remove the load button. And from there, you can now use the shape sliders for modifying your mesh. So, let's open the torso section. And then, let's check how the breast size changes when we move the corresponding slider. Apparently the mesh does not fit nicely for all slider settings. This is so, because our weights have not yet been optimized for the dress. However there is a problem, I already indicated this before. That is, the bone weight maps are used for two different purposes. First, they are used for the normal animation of the character. But in addition to this, the same weight maps are also used to control the fitting. And this, leads to an ugly problem. That is, we either can optimize the weight maps to get best deformation behavior within the animations, or, we can optimize the weights to get best fitting for different slider values. So, let's ignore this double purpose of the weight maps for now, and first optimize the fitting for the breasts, therefore we begin with checking the weight groups for our mesh, and therefore we switch the mesh to weight paint mode. Then, in the tool shelf, click on the Avastar tab, and navigate down to the option, Show Bones, and click on the preset button, Skin. Now you see the classic skeleton bones displayed in blue, and the fitted mesh bones displayed as orange octahedrals. So, let me also change the view type to sticks, because then it becomes a bit easier to inspect the weights. Now let's get back to the breasts. A quick inspection shows us, that the most influence on the breasts comes from the pectoral bones. However we see that also the chest bone takes a lot of influence on the breast area, which is not exactly correct in this case. So let us reduce this influence first. Step to the tools tab. Then right click and finally pin the brush section. This will keep the brushes visible when we change back to the Avastar tab. Now step into the Options tab. There, ensure that you have X mirror enabled. This helps us to do symmetrical weighting. And now step back to the Avastar tab. From the brush section, choose the Subtract brush. Decrease the subtract value a bit, to make the brush less sensitive. Then begin removing the weights from the lower part of the breasts. However there is another caveat here. That is, your view is not updated, while you wait paint. But you can enforce a view update, by clicking the refresh shape button in the tool shelf. So in principle you should refresh the shape every few brush strokes to see the changes on the mesh. But well, that is not very comfortable to use. Therefore we have added a keyboard shortcut for this, that is, Alt, Q. Now you can paint with the brush, and frequently type the keyboard shortcut to get a much smoother workflow. Once you have removed enough weight from the chest, you can check again, how the breast slider changed the mesh behavior.
so, for big breasts, all is well now. But when the slider values goes below about 30, then the avatar mesh starts to poke through again. We can make this behave a bit better by carefully adding some weight to the belly bone. But you will quickly realize, that optimizing the weights for one shape value, might destroy the shape for other shape values. And this starts getting more and more complex with increasing number of slider changes in your shape. So, the easiest way to make this less of an annoyance is to use alpha masks to hide any poke through of your avatar mesh. But alpha masks will not work well when your mesh is more open like for example a dress with a low neckline. In that case all you can do, is trying to get the weights adjusted as good as possible. However, I believe that you most probably will end up by providing a few optimized meshes for different ranges of slider values. So, you see that fitted mesh can be used nicely in some situations but it does not work well in others. I am sure, that we are not yet at the end of all of this, so let us get some more experience first, and then see how we can either improve the workflows or the tools. Okay, so far we have seen how you can convert your existing meshes to fitted meshes. Now let's see how we work on a non-weighted model. So, let's restart with a fresh Ava star. And with a fresh dress. However in this case the mesh does not contain any pre-made weights, so this is a clean and unweighted model. Now select the mesh and the armature, both in object mode. And finally, in the skinning panel, choose the weights from bones option. This will automatically generate an initial set of weight maps for you. Now proceed by opening the fitted mesh deform configuration. Select the fitted mesh preset. Then select the move weights option. Enable the generate weights button. And finally press the apply button. And here is your new fitted mesh with its initial weights. From here on, everything is the same as we have seen before. So, you will need to adjust the weights carefully by hand in order to get decent results in Second Life. Before we come to the end of this video, please let me give you one final hint, the Avastar's default settings are only meant as reasonable initial configurations, so they do by no means define any standard. And please be prepared that in most cases you have to optimize your weighting. And honestly, the default weights of the SL avatar do not work well on custom meshes in general. So, please do not expect the one button click and be happy solution. And from here on, you have to take your time to explore the Avastar tool, and hopefully you will have some fun with it. Thanks for watching.